I'm, uh, my name is Su Jin, Su Jin Chan, and I present about software education at Korean University and, and my study. Uh, uh, I introduced my introduce myself. Uh, I'm PhD computer science about computer science education in Korea University. And people comment has the history and statue of software education in Korea. Do you remember? Then uh, I will explain about the software of university in Korea directly. Um, in twenty in twenty fifteen, the Korean government announced twelve major tasks in three areas for software software education. In particular, uh, software education in university. University was uh, emphasized in four ways. One, two, three, four. And uh, I translate in English like this. So uh, I will explain the first and fourth aspect. Uh, expand basic and convergence education and software oriented university. The go um, Korean government supports for software education in university. The first uh, one, the Ministry of Education supports the university with the aim of fostering high quality software specialists and fostering advanced research is personal reading the software industry. And second, second organization is the um, MSIP, Ministry of Science, IC, and Future Planning. Has, uh, they have selected and selected software-oriented universities since 2015. Uh, as of now, uh, 35 uh, 1.65 million annual mm, by annual it's a school. So uh, every university want to be a software-oriented university. And Yongju's 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 uh, Professor Yong John Yongju. Uh, I don't think you got there. Yeah. Also, Yong uh the University of Yongju uh John Yong Professor John Yongju uh is a software oriented university, but my university is not yet. <laughs> Uh, if the university become a software oriented university, uh, they can learn like this. Uh, for major, they can uh, software, software they can learn software education to get both theory and practice and they can um, training to grow into hands-on talent who can perform in the field. If uh, the student is no major, uh, they can learn basic software training for its major and they can build software literacy. So, uh, so they want to be, uh, so uh, so they can you know, customize the education. Mm. 
but uh, <laughs> but the others, other universities like uh, our university, my my university, uh, we want to be a software-oriented university, maybe. Uh, so they make computation subject in liberal arts education. Um, so they provide to non-majors, not only majors, the software education. In Korean, uh, software education is computer science education. So it's computer science education is very important, uh, as you think. So uh, uh, if uh, the some some students is not major uh, about computer science, uh, like art or uh, literature or um, uh, sports, or uh, they they major is not non CS computer science because uh, the you know as you know the society is very ch uh, quickly changed to uh, <laughs> yeah so every university uh, every uh, most most university teach about the computer science and computational thinking for all students both so major CS major or not CS major. Right. Yeah. So because so it's I, very import, important content. Oh yeah. Thank sure. you. So <laughs> if I have to understand it correctly, um, Sujin, what you are trying to say is uh, you are applying computer computational thinking in arts yeah. in other fields, right? Like how you yeah. approach in that way, rather than just doing the two things totally combined, like that's what we were mistaking previously. So you're applying computational thinking logic in other fields like liberal arts and other areas, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. In basic, uh, they, um, they shouldn't know about the basic concept or yeah, basic skill, yeah. Sure. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it, uh, from now, uh, I will explain about my research, uh, city education for liberal arts education. Uh, so I teach many students. I taught many students. Uh, uh, my school is here. Uh, this is South Korea. Yes. So my home is like this, like that. Mm, it, it's in Chungcheong-do, in South Korea. Uh, Hoso University is Christian Spirits and Ventures. Uh, Hoso University has uh, Christian and Venture Spirits. So um, they they uh, they think that the Hoso University emphasizes uh, computer science. Yeah, I think. Mm. And a uh, mid ranges university in Korea, and but it is very huge university. So admission is uh, uh, 2,800 students in every day, every year. Uh, but uh, we are not software oriented university yet. And this is uh, our school's campus. Uh, it's Asan is the main campus, and Cheonan and Dangjin and so on. There are, there are four campus. It's so very big uh, school. Uh, so in liberal arts subjects uh, related to software or computer science is uh, three. Uh, is um uh, three three subjects. One is using software like o o Office uh, OA, and the others is understanding software and coding. 
uh, which is about uh, we using about programming with using Scratch, and it is important. Uh, it is uh, most important. Uh, this uh, computational thinking. It is required from this year, and so uh, all first grade students should uh, uh, take this uh, course. So um, many colleagues in Hosa University, and uh, we should teach its competition thinking. But last semester, our computation thinking subject is a um, completely, completely new subject. And huge number of students per class, 40 students to uh, 120 students, like this. And it's not professor who taught it. So, uh, Nobody, nobody know about that. How to teach? What, uh, what to teach? So, um, I'm. Um, it is not computer. Uh, there is no computer lab, and there, there was no textbook, and no lesson plan. So I'm. Um, so my study title is like that, and. Uh, I taught uh, first grade students uh, I, uh, about 300 students, maybe. And there are many majors. And, and I think uh, it's, it is a um, um, is uh, there there are uh, there are many difficult in computation thinking education at the university because uh, city education is uh, have burden on new subjects and have burden on programming difficulty and low interest and necessity for the com computation thinking subjects of uh, uh, to the students and uh, there was lack of computer lab. So therefore, uh, I, uh, I think it should make sure all students have a good learning experience about experience about computer think subjects. Uh, it is, uh, uh, so it is important to uh, make a learning motivation, I think. So um, I study uh, my class lesson based AICS theory, okay, like this. So we are have uh, we was uh, this I uh, um they um, our instructors uh, who teach these subjects. They also. Uh, did a workshop together and discussion. So we make a lesson plan like this. Uh, at first, we have a theory lecture. Uh, yeah, mm. <laughs> theory of, of uh, a cheat. Mm, maybe theory. Okay. Theorem. Uh, theorem yeah. of each unit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's on unit, and probably uh, uh, we provide the video or various cases, and we ex explain about the concept of computer thinking or computer science, uh, and then uh, activity. We have uh, activities with uh, plugged in activity uh, using worksheets uh, and a uh, scratch practice a uh, little because uh, there are uh, there was not uh, there was not computer so uh, it's a, sm a small size 
and then I uh, they shoot a chest uh, like activity sheets or a stretch and set project reports like that and we use uh, online sites like that then I make a syllabus like this uh, you, on, of the first uh, understanding of computer science, uh, computational thinking, and then understanding computer and data representation and binary binary numbers Number. and which yeah multimedia representation, uh, pro problem com decomposition, pattern recognition, and then abstraction algorithm and data structure. Uh, and computational thinking project finally and uh, we every week you know every week uh, I gave a, a worksheet uh, for unplugged, unplugged activity uh, for example like this uh, I show that next uh, it's uh, unplugged games with uh, Unplug games worksheets. So, uh, our left side is uh, for abstraction. So, making a random sentence, uh, uh, and then right side is uh, for conditional game with dice app like, like that. Mm. Excuse uh, me. The question is: uh, Are the students allowed to? take their own pieces or notebooks to schools to use or make activities could you explore this or not how is that in your university because sometimes they are not allowed to do that i don't know how is it in your university <sighs> um, maybe uh, since major student it has uh, uh, they they have they have a laptop, but uh, non major students is um, uh, is uh, all students have all all students don't have the laptop. Uh, I ask them uh, who uh, who I uh, do you have a laptop? Then they. Mm, about uh, under half percent maybe mm. so if you have laptop you can uh, get take that bring it in to yeah school. bring it but uh, if you have no laptop uh, yeah <laughs> uh, that's, what, that's all but the uh, most of them have uh, or don't have right. computers yeah, yeah. How is it? Yes. Yeah. What, what uh, I understand people. is coming back from a similar background earlier, people yeah. uh, in our country also, like initially when computer arrived, so only those who are studying computer science might buy a laptop, or, but not everybody at home will have. I think similar is the situation here. So only computer science students might have laptop, but not all of them, and non-CS do not have laptops, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yes. And and universities also do not provide any computer as such to practice or something. Very low. But uh, in like Korean, uni uh, Korean university, uh, we have uh, some computer labs, but uh, this case is very, um, very, very many students uh, participate in this semester. So about hundred people. So uh, university cannot give support to all students by okay. computer. So there is a big problem in Korea, Korean university uh, mm -hmm. for computing education for all subject students. Sure. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So next one, yeah, it's there is a worksheet like this, and it's it's 
uh, it's they played games together using worksheets and apps. I emphasize together um, activate activity together. I emphasize it. Uh, and then they use, so sometimes they use some apps uh, like dice or <coughs> the, uh, pick, pick a card like that. And, and I also make made Coda OS, OS contents into a worksheet. Um, they are, so there are students who played, played games such as uh, like this games, real games, uh, Pac-Man or Raccoon or Luxury uh, Paper like that. So on their on their smartphone, and then they uh, they decompose the games and uh, find patterns. So. Uh, so sometimes students try to coding on their smartphone or laptop. Uh, in Korean, most students have the smartphone. Yeah. Uh, some, some students have a laptop or all students has a smartphone. Yeah. So I use uh, or uh, I use the smart I um, uh, I allow the stu student to use a smartphone for the class. And then uh, once or twice, I gave my students a simple coding task, uh, home uh, like homework, uh, because there are no yeah, computers. So uh, I explain this uh, program scratchy and then you can this uh, so you should uh, add or uh, um, change the blocks and then uh, take uh, unload the um, project on online so yeah uh, uh, one of the uh, suggestions, sorry, uh, sorry, Sujin, yeah. just an idea came yeah. in my mind. So when they're working on smartphones, because the screen display is so small, um, yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering, you know, like thinking if you have, say, a big TV somewhere in the university, you can plug in the display of the, comp of the smartphone into the TV mm -hmm. and show yeah. the projects on a big screen for everybody to understand or see the code. Yeah, I want to. Right. Yeah, I yes, want to yeah. Oh, yeah. Many teachers and professors use the multi-screen. Yes, yeah. yeah, smartphone. It's not easy. Okay. Uh, every class, yeah, for every class. Yeah, so I didn't yet, yeah. And I use class card um, like this. OK, there, there is a Korean version quiz app, yeah. Like as Google Kids app, yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, classic card is a program for students to kids better. Better. <laughs> and then, uh, so uh, the students checked what they learned from the day. So the students like it the most. They like <laughs> it. Favorite student is world famous CS contents. Uh, I. Um, I show the Pebras problem. Uh, it allows a student to, to motivate or check the concept they have learned. Have learned. Uh, it is a CS problem uh, so, uh, with the storytelling. So it's very easy or um, uh, interesting. So they like it. And then uh, I use some flood activities like uh, error detection, magic games, or final reflecting activities. And then 
Of course, the students also need to take the test. It is because uh, exact feedback and reward for learning efforts are important. I think. So, in addition, uh, because of the large class size, uh, so I often use tools to communicate with the students, such as uh, menti.com or Blackboard. Yeah, you know, mentimentor.com. Yeah, so um, I ask them, I ask them, uh, what are the testing methods that have enhanced your learning motivation? Um, the student response to this method is as follows. The students thought that methods, class start and unplugged worksheets and games, uh, it, it, it can um, increase the, their learning motivation. So Jin, uh, can you yeah. please go to the previous slide uh, just for a second? Yeah. Thank, thank you. Just one second. Uh, I had a question to ask you. Um, so it's not, it's related to menti.com and other things. I, I just thought of asking you. So since the medium of um, your worksheet and all the coding or unplugged activities in games, and this worksheet, all I see is in Chinese language. Sorry, in yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. It's in Korean yeah. language, right? So uh, I was curious. So when these kids are, uh, when these children are going back to say internet to take any help from forum or any other places about if they're stuck anywhere, do they get everything written in your own language or you have to, again, you know, translate to others and understand it? Yes, uh, this activity is uh, uh, Korean students. Uh, next slide show the graph. Yeah, they uh, motivation by the interaction or with the tool. Yeah, with mm -hmm. application. So uh, this slide show the online interaction by menti.com. So uh, mm -hmm. last uh, la last. Uh, question is uh, how is the difficulty of this uh, class so uh, they rep rep uh, respond uh, their difficulty of this class so teacher and professor uh, recognize uh, students uh, perception stress learning steps or learning uh, degree so uh, they change the the stretching of teaching and myself yeah next time so uh, this is a very very useful uh, recognize students uh, perception of strong learning steps so i think uh, the interaction is very very uh, very interesting for computational thinking or uh, the learning steps uh, so this tool useful for uh, recognize a students learning a degree or learning a pre preparations so mm -hmm. okay yeah thank you and then uh, in Korean situation is spread out spread out all students for teaching computational thinking so we have I think uh, 20 or uh, 300 university in Korea, uh, only just 35, uh, uh, Susan John mentioned earlier, 35 university uh, announced uh, software leading university. So mm -hmm. the software oriented or leading university have to uh, make the new software majors and uh, they have to Computational thinking, teach computational thinking to all students. Okay. All students, yes. So it is the spread out all university in Korea. Yeah. It's a huge challenge, isn't it? 
Yes, that's right. <laughs> big challenge and big stream. Yes, big change in Korea. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Sujin, come back. I asked the, the students, all students, and, I com and then I compared the experimental group and control group. Uh, and like this, the experimental group is more high to all components of learning uh, motivation. Uh, especially a uh, major group, uh, six major. Mm. Then, yeah, in conclusion, I hope the, that major students understand basic concepts of computational thinking and develop motivation to learn more deeply. And for non-major students, uh, they enhance learning motivation for computational thinking and offset without bad feeling or fear of the future technology. And I expect to, to improve our future system. Thank you, Soji. Thank you, Sojin. Um, now we are going to open for more questions. Adele and uh... oh, we have Maureen here. Hello, Maureen. Oh, hi. Sorry, I'm in and out. I'm trying to get a whole bunch of other things done, so my technology is not working well today. So no, no videos. Just me listening in. Sorry, but thank you. Okay, to start with. Yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, to uh, both to you and uh, Suwan. Last, so uh, what I understood is that you try to bring uh, computational thinking to all students. I mean, uh, for this level. And in your last presentation, Suwan, you say that you want to bring computer science since primary school in Korea, right? So uh, how now? I, I think that the situation will change very quickly. You will have students coming from high school to your university who knows already uh, programming. So how will you change in the near future this situation? How you will make the connection? OK, this is my question how to make the connection between what you are teaching in, uh, in middle school and high school and university level for all the students. Thank you. Uh, is really my question, question clear? Yeah, that's is, a very good my... question. Mm -hmm. I can give you another example. In, uh, in Ireland, I think, or in, uh, in, um, in, uh, in the UK somewhere, uh, they notice that every year, new year, the students, they are learning to program very early at very early age. So what they are doing uh, in university level, they are making uh, like a survey and they are asking students, when did you start to pro programming? And what is your knowledge about coding? And uh, uh, with the result of the survey- Oh, Suwan, sorry. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, I think uh, we try to uh, computational thinking or uh, computing education for all age, uh, like as uh, others uh, were, uh, we we will make the new curriculum for start uh, first grade in elementary school. So we want to try to uh, the the curriculum of United uh, United Kingdom, yeah, uh, made by. Uh, Computing at school in UK, so we will we want to start it uh, first grade in elementary school, so uh, students can learn coding or programming and algorithm. So early ages, so uh, middle school student and high school student, uh, we want to use the text coding uh, from middle school students start and and then uh, 
they can they can code coding the Python or JavaScript, and they can learn in high school level. Uh, they can learn C or Java, yes. And then at university level, they can use the coding or programming, apply their majors, connect their majors. So uh, they, uh, they, can, the, they can have the ability to applications, uh, their the computational thinking, apply their major. So uh, example, for example, they can learn the big data using the big data or using the AI, using the robot uh, for their majors. So we, we want to programming and computational thinking education from early ages we changed the national curriculum, so we hope to start it uh, 2022 or 21. And we so we will make the prepare the new curriculum for early age. Yes, in Korea, this is the uh, the change in Korea. Ask yes, something I, or make some comments. I I have. I'm thinking about something. Uh, you know, in Sweden, 10, 10 million people only, and we have uh, trying to do the same. But uh, I think it's too uh, diverse. We have two, 290 small municipalities, and each of them have their own money for schools. So it's a, a little bit. Uh, different. I see in, in your country uh, the state, uh, the whole state is uh, putting in money, a lot of money. Is it right? I, I, th I saw uh, on the first slide or next slide, I don't know, you can have two, near two million dollars uh, to, to each school. I think it's it's the university. Yeah, yeah for, for university, but uh, you know, we have the national curriculum and national ministry of education. So mm. uh, many funding uh, by the ministry of education and national funding. So we try to equal, equality and equality for all subject in Korea. So. I think it is very, very powerful policy uh, for education. We have the national curriculums. So we have the uh, central central minister of education. But mm. uh, there is a difference for area education. So you know, Seoul is very many money, much money, but. Uh, uh, country uh, Ministry of Education has not more uh, less than the funding, so uh, there is a difference uh, depends on areas. But mm. uh, we have the national curriculum and national Ministry of uh, Education, so we try to equality of equality for education all age. Mm. Okay. So did you, I, I saw on, on the map you have uh, regions. So uh, okay. each uh, region, is it uh, uh, their own uh, region uh, or is the whole country, uh, it's only a, a region? I don't know uh, why, why do you have all the, these? We have a similar in Sweden, but is it different? You have a national curriculum, I understand, but different, uh, Money in in each re region. Yes, yes. Yeah. National yeah. curriculum is all all area, all yes. areas. Yes, like and like, like in Sweden. Yes. Mm. Yes, yes. But uh, we have the national and uh, regional minister of education has the funding uh, two tracks. One is the central minister of education made by, and mm -hmm. uh, another is regional regional ministry of education yes so 
we have the two uh, the funding from by two tracks. Okay. Yes. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, in Seoul, you pronounce it Seoul? <laughs> yes, yes. So. yes, yes. I, I think there are, I don't know, 20 million people, maybe? No, no. Uh, in Seoul, 30. Zoomed it, it's 9.776 <laughs> million. Okay. In 2017. Okay, it's, it's like the whole Sweden in Seoul. <laughs> Ah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think that's interesting how to to see your country and how we how have you 12 million in São Paulo. Yes, uh, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Please I know. Bring, bring some of them in Canada, please. <laughs> Big size nations brush. <laughs> Maureen, uh, are you still there? Or would you like to ask something? Many, any comments or anything? Yes, I'm still here. I, I was just Thank really you. surprised by the, um, the lack of laptops in the colleges. I, I guess um, it's not something we face here. And I, I've just been really interested in computational thinking and starting it very young and using it throughout the curriculum here in the U.S. So, yeah, it, I just find it really, really interesting listening to the presentation, but I don't have much to add. I'm just listening. How about the U.S., uh, the situation of U.S. university? Uh, you don't have laptop? Yeah. At least that's what I heard. Uh, in Canada? Or uh, yeah. yeah, they do have. So the government actually helps quite a lot in making sure like the education system is well equipped and there are enough resources. Mm -hmm. And what I found working in the US is that um, like resources wasn't a limitation ever while teaching or learning in any kind of experimental thing like makerspace with uh, yeah. all kinds of computational thinking. In India, uh, the part where I am from, like Bengal, there we still had in the university, like in 2007 or 2003, four at that time, we still had one computer per, per student in yeah. the university in computer science education uh, when we were doing the Bachelor of Technology. And however, um, in some of the areas like in Southern India and in West, we are still like when I'm collaborating right now with a few people there, they are telling me like they're trying to raise funds to bring computers for every children in the school and colleges. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's advancing, but yeah, it's slow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, I was curious, Sujin, uh, if you can elaborate a little more about, you know, the computer think, computational thinking application in liberal arts that you mentioned, like, you know, how you try to, you told about the curriculum that I saw, like how you are trying to build the syllabus. However, um, if you can just give a few, uh, you know, interesting examples, that would be very nice. Thank you. Yeah, so we referred uh, by code.org or uh, unplugged activity uh, made by Tim Bell professor. So mm -hmm. we translate Korean language in code.org content activity or uh, we have Korean version book, uh, Unplugged Activity, yeah, by Tim Bell's book, yeah. She, she is a uh, translator, uh, she is a translator, uh, Tim Bell's uh, Unplugged Activity book. Yeah, I, I like Unplugged, so I um, many, uh, uh, I, uh, I always use the uh, Unplugged, or to teach it, yes, yeah. Mm. And um, uh, before I was uh, an elementary school student, uh, elementary school teacher, so uh, uh, I um, I want to teach more interesting and activity. So um, in university, uh, I think. Uh, so many professors should teach more 
uh, uh, interesting, uh, interestingly, yeah. For, uh, okay. Although the computer science is very uh, hard and not easy to learn, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I I think the computer science is very uh, fun and interesting. Uh, yeah, so I can, <laughs> yeah. Mm. The pro mm, many professor or teachers should learn how to teach more uh, uh, easier or more interesting. Yeah, interesting for that. Sure. It, it um and I uh I uh I uh, I see uh it is important to the teaching method than the knowledge uh, I think so uh it is teaching method is very important yeah I think yeah. Mm -hmm. I think everyone what is the better than uh, learning computational thinking uh, uh, by the programming or by the unplugged activity yeah what is the better than yeah uh, how about out there uh, what do you think about the better than method uh, learning computational thinking by programming or by unplugged activity. Uh, uh, can you give uh, Can you give us another example or another method to teach computer thinking or computer science? Uh, yeah. We want to learn uh, another method. Yeah. So, um, uh, if you can. So another method, yeah. remember? Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. My question uh, is, yeah. yes. ah, he's back. Hi, Adele. Yes, sorry, sorry. We're looking for Hi, you. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, 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 I was listening. I was listening. Don't worry. Uh, so, what yeah. is your question? Can you repeat again, uh, Suan? Okay. Yeah. My question is, uh, what is the better, better method uh, for learning computational thinking? Uh, what is the uh, programming method and the other is unplugged activity method what is better yes ah what is better okay i, I have my teaching uh, ways i mean uh, in in middle school and i use this even in in primary school uh, wow. so uh, in your first presentation you you say that it's important that the, we we the motivation of the, 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 the students is very extremely important. So when I go to the school teaching computer science, I say to myself, I try to, 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 good, to give a good uh, experience with programming. This is the goal. So now how to do this goal? For me, I love robotics and Internet of Things uh, stuff. Uh, so for me, the best way to teach, uh, for me, uh, to teach programming is with robotics because uh, youth or even kids, when they program, they see the results uh, in the physical world. They see, for wow. example, a robot working, moving, a, move, a servo moving, an LED lighting uh, on and off. So you see things. So uh, when, uh, what I love about uh, teaching uh, uh, coding uh, through robotics and uh, IoT is this, is that through physical computing, is that when you code, you really see the, the result. Uh, personally, I don't use uh, unplugged activities uh, because, uh, for example, in middle school, some of my students, they don't have computers. So for me, when they come to my, my lab, it's their opportunity to see and to touch uh, the computer. So that's why I, uh, I don't, usually don't do uh, unplugged activities and I focus on the programming uh, parts, I mean, using the computer. But this is personal. <laughs> yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you.
I agree with Adil uh, about the uh, you know motivational thing and how to start from there because just like he is motivated by robotics and you know robots and lots of kids especially boys they were interested in it sometimes like while teaching girls about coding I found like they have other interests too for example dancing a lot of people love dancing or say music so what I try to do is uh, in an informal setup where we have lots of things to experiment and you know play around with. I try to start with their interests. Like mm -hmm. uh, there was an interesting um, thing that I will more elaborate in my next session, the talk where I will present. Like there is coding with dancing. So there's coding with you know singing, music, and different ways we can incorporate it. So that's how we can start by you know motivating children with new examples interesting examples so that they feel like okay we need to program this and learn it ourselves second is if they try to do an unplugged method then uh, there are ways to you know uh, write puzzles or logic um, in an interesting way and make them understand the concept so sometimes when the concept is clear they start doing their own stuff so that is also very helpful so in that sense, unplugged helps also. And especially where you don't have so many computers or resources, I think you can try that the way you are doing in your you know, research. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Yeah. Maureen, you Maureen is giving us a link for some very good uh, um, activities. Yes. Uh, maybe Maureen, you could uh, talk uh, about this a little bit uh, you, with experience of with uh, what you have with this. Um, Maureen has a lot of experience in this kind of stuff. She's amazing. Maureen, could you explain that a little bit for us, please? Sure, a little bit. I went to um, some trainings on computational thinking, using it across the curriculum. And one of the examples that they had us do was basically a predator-prey kind of simulation. And we had to stand up and do it. And it, this was just basically changing habitat, changing food source, those kinds of things. So it fits in with science. It fits in with lots of different other, other things. But it was fun to do. We, did the, we grasped the data as we did it. So students could actually see the algorithm happening before their eyes, and they're actually part of it. So those kinds of things to me, where the students are not always tied to a computer, they're actually doing what the algorithm says. Because I teach elementary kids. When they get a chance to stand up and do it, it makes a big difference. And then you can go on and you can show them what this graphs out to be and figure out the math involved, figure out the algorithm, so that if you had to make a, a prediction using the computer, you now know how it all happens. So to me, you really need to use lots of other things, because I personally cannot stand computer games. I hate them. Um, they, and AI makes me dizzy. So I, I'm actually looking for lots of other ways to teach these things to the kids. Great, thank you, Maureen. Uh, this this open questions are always interesting because we always have someone that this group is okay. So um, I think we we are done to, for today. We have uh, another meeting in 15 days when Mohana is going to talk about her work. She She's from India and she has experience of uh, working. She's so young and she has a lot of experience already in India, Hong Kong, United States, Canada. So I'm very happy that she's with us. Sorry, I'm so <laughs> I got a cold. And so I hope to, to, to see you all in 15 days.
for keeping this group interacting, exchange ideas. And I'd like to thank you very much, uh, especially to Sojin for her presentation today. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for presentation. Uh, it was you. really interesting. Uh, for the next one, I'm just uh, for Mohana. I just wanted to know uh, the, the coding situation in middle school and high school and even primary school in India and Canada. If you just have uh, an idea about this, it will be my, okay. my question. So okay, I'll try to gather uh, that. <laughs> Though I'm not very exactly. touched right now, but I will still try through my other, you know, connections. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Just to know yeah. what are the trends, you know, in mm -hmm. uh, in Canada, in India, yeah. and uh, problems in India, and how you are solving them. So, sure. because, uh, uh, what I noticed that uh, in developing country they have their own problem. In mm -hmm. non-developing countries, they have they have different problems. I can tell you, for example, a problem <laughs> uh, right. like in Africa, you can find uh, uh, schools in capitals like Addis Abeba in Ethiopia. They don't have electricity. Mm. So how can you implement uh, ICT without, in mm. a school without even electricity? So, uh, right. so I expect that India, uh, you, yeah. you, uh, you have different problems and everywhere we have different problems. Mm -hmm. so, this is my, my question. <laughs> sure, sure. And for that uh, electricity thing that you mentioned, if you have heard, like OLPC was a very nice project, one laptop per mm -hmm. child, where mm -hmm. they tried, MIT tried to solve the problem of electricity by, you know, automatically mm -hmm. gearing the laptop for children so that they can run it on battery and go to the remotest places on earth and, you know, get mm -hmm. a hint of programming. However, there are lots of reasons, I think, why some of the places it didn't turn out that well as it was expected. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, you, you brought a very nice point. There are challenges and, you know, pros and cons of every way of education in different countries. And what I found troubling in different parts of the world is everybody's trying to learn from each other. So uh, hopefully I'll try to, you know, bring something to it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so have a nice weekend and we see, I hope to see you all in 15 days. Okay? Sure, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Sujini. Thank you. You are thank wonderful. You, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you for your help. Homo, Hana. Bye-bye. <laughs> no problem. Bye, hello. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.